Lesson 42, Modern Cavemen. We'll talk about caving in this text. Now first, listen and bear this question on mind. With what does a writer compare the goofy burger? 作者把goofyburger这个洞比作什么? Cave exploration, or potholing as it has come to be known, is a relatively new sport. Perhaps it is the desire for solitude or the chance of making an unexpected discovery that lures people down to the depths of the earth. It is impossible to give a satisfactory explanation for a potholer's motives. For him, caves have the same peculiar fascination which high mountains have for the climber. They arouse instincts which can only be dimly understood. Exploring really deep caves is not a task for the Sunday afternoon rambler. Such undertakings require the precise planning and foresight of military operations. It can take as long as eight days to rig up rope ladders and to establish supply bases before a descent can be made into a very deep cave. Precautions of this sort are necessary for it is impossible to foretell the exact nature of the difficulties which will confront the potholer. The deepest known cave in the world is the Gouffre Burger near Grenoble. It extends to a depth of 3,723 feet. This immense chasm has been formed by an underground stream which has tunneled a course through a floor in the rocks. The entrance to the cave is on a plateau in the Dauphine Alps. As it is only six feet across, it is barely noticeable. The cave might never have been discovered had not the entrance been spotted by the distinguished French potholer Berger. Since its discovery, it has become a sort of potholer's Everest. Though a number of descents have been made, much of it still remains to be explored. A team of potholers recently went down the Gouffre Burger. After entering the narrow gap on the plateau, they climbed down the steep sides of the cave until they came to a narrow corridor. They had to edge their way along this, sometimes wading across shallow streams or swimming across deep pools. Suddenly they came to a waterfall which dropped into an underground lake at the bottom of the cave. They plunged into the lake and after loading their gear on an inflatable rubber dinghy, let the current carry them to the other side. To protect themselves from the icy water, they had to wear special rubber suits. At the far end of the lake, they came to huge piles of rubble which had been washed up by the water. In this part of the cave, they could hear an insistent booming sound, which they found was caused by a small water spout shooting down into a pool from the roof of the cave. Squeezing through a cleft in the rocks, the potholers arrived at an enormous cavern, the size of a huge concert hall. After switching on powerful arc lights, they saw great stalagmites, some of them over 40 feet high rising up like tree trunks to meet the stalactites suspended from the roof. Round about, piles of limestone glistened in all the colors of the rainbow. In the eerie silence of the cavern, the only sound that could be heard was made by water, which dripped continuously from the high dome above them. So with what does a writer compare the Goofy Burger? Right. He compares it with Mount Everest for mountain climbers because Mount Everest is the most challenging for mountain climbers. Mount Everest 就是珠穆朗玛峰 So this text introduces the sport of cave exploration or potholing to us. The first paragraph tries to analyze the reason for its popularity. And then the second paragraph briefly introduces the sport and the deepest cave, which is the Goofy Burger. 
and tell us about how it was discovered. The third paragraph tells us about a team of potholers' exploration of this cave. It describes the difficulties for the potholers as well as the magnificent view of this cave. All right, now we'll look at some language points in the text. Cave exploration or potholing. Potholing, so we know, means cave exploration. Pothole is a deep cave formed underground. Potholing refers to the spot. We can say to go potholing. The person who goes potholing is called a potholer. The desire for solitude. Solitude means being physically alone and mentally cut off by your own wish or compulsion or by your own choice. It's a little bit different from being alone or being lonely. Being alone is being on one's own. Feeling lonely, you can feel lonely even when you are being with a lot of people. That lures people down to the depths of the earth. Lure means similar to attract or attempt. It indicates a kind of irresistible force and sometimes deceived into something but not necessarily bad. Attract It does not indicate a kind of irresistible force. Tempt but tempt usually refers to something evil that you are tempted into. Look at this example. She was lured into the job by the offer of a high salary. Which can only be dimly understood. Dimly means vaguely. It can mean differently in different contexts. For example, she found herself in a dimly lit room. Dimly here means a vaguely lit room. He was only dimly aware of the risk. Dimly here means the same as the text. Dimly understood means only not clearly understood. Here means he was only very vaguely aware of the risk. It can take as long as eight days to rig up rope ladders. Take as long as eight days is a way to emphasize how long it takes. It means actually, it can take eight days. So it's just a I'll give you one more example. It took him as long as three hours to write the first paragraph. To establish supply bases. To establish means to set up. For example, we have decided to establish a new system. But establish can also mean to become recognized or to become famous. For example, he has established himself as a leading critic. Means he has already become famous as a leading critic. Back to the text, to establish supply bases means to set up places for supplies. Base here refers to a particular place. Sometimes it can also be referring to a place of company or a military base. A descent is a formal way of saying 
before going down. Give you one more example. Passengers must fasten their seat belt before descent. 降落之前，乘客必须系好安全带。It is impossible to foretell the exact nature of the difficulties. Foretell means to tell in advance or to know beforehand. For example, nobody can foretell the future. 没有人能够预知未来 The exact nature of the difficulties. Nature here means the exact kind of the difficulties. We have learned before the closeness to nature. Here, nature refers to the natural world, 是指自然界 or human nature, 人性 And in this example, the advice she provides is chiefly of a practical nature. Here, nature means the same as the text, meaning. The advice is chiefly of a practical type, 主要是很实用性的 Which will confront the potholder? Confront means face. Look at these two examples. When he returned home from holidays, he was confronted with a pile of work. 当他从休假回来的时候，他面临着一堆工作 Be confronted with means be faced with. It was an issue we have to confront sooner or later. 迟早我们都要面对这个问题 Here, confront means to face. So the difference between the two phrases is the same as the difference between be faced with and to face. 一个是指面临的情况，一个是指面对什么情况 Has tunneled a course. Tunnel here is being used as a verb, meaning to flow underground on a particular route. Course means the route of a stream. Look at this example. It has not yet been decided whether to tunnel under the river or build a bridge over it. 还没有决定是在。河下边修隧道，还是在上边架桥。So tunnel here means to dig a tunnel underground. Through a flaw in the rocks. Flaw here means chasm, 裂缝 Look at these two examples to see what flaw means. A flaw in the diamond. Flaw here means a defect. 钻石中的瑕疵。You can also use flaw to refer to the vice or defect of a person. For example, jealousy is Othello's major flaw. 奥赛罗最大的弱点就是嫉妒。The cave might never have been discovered had not the entrance be spotted by the distinguished French potholder Berger. Had not been spotted. Here, had not the entrance been spotted, 其实是一个条件状语从句，表示一种假设。表达完整的话，应当是 The cave might never have been discovered if the entrance had not been spotted by the distinguished French potholder. 所以，当由 if 引导的条件状语从句。表达一种假设的时候 ，if 可以省略，然后把助动词提前。I'll give you more examples. If I had had any sense, I would have kept quiet about it. 我要是有点头脑的话，关于这件事情，我就应当什么也不说。那么这个条件状语从句就可以把 if 省略，把助动词 had 提前，变成。Had I had any sense, I would have kept quiet about it. Or, if you should be interested in our offer, please contact us. 如果你对我们的这个工作有兴趣，请跟我们联系。
。这里也可以把 if 省略 ，should 情态动词提前变成 ，Should you be interested in our offer, please contact us. The distinguished French potholer means the famous French potholer. Or eminent, but these two adjectives mainly describe well-known in serious undertakings, while famous simply means well-known. Much of it still remains to be explored. Remains to be explored actually means much of it has not been explored yet. So remain to be done. Means not yet done. For example, a great many things remain to be done. 还有很多事情没有做 It remains to be seen who will finally win. Means now you cannot see who will finally win. They had to edge their way along this. Edge one's way means to move ahead very slowly. For example, a long line of traffic is edging its way forward. 一条长长的车队在慢慢的往前挪。我们在以前的课文也学习过，用一个动词后边加上 one's way， 可以表示行进的一种方式。For example, make one's way. Hans had made his way back into West Germany on foot. To protect themselves from the icy water, 保护以便不受伤害 For example, how can I protect my skin from the sun? 怎么样才能防晒 From 这个介词 it usually means not allowed to harm, or knowledge, or sight, etc. 经常用 from 的动词词组有 keep from. Hide from, or shelter from, or shield from. At the far end of the lake, end means the furthest point. Look at this example. He sat at one end of the table, and I sat at the other. 我们两人每个人坐在桌子的一头 Which had been washed up. By the wall. Insistent here means a continuous sound, 连续不断的声音 Give you one more example. He could hear the insistent pounding of drums from his room. Insistent can also mean insisting on the significance of something. For example, she was always insistent on good manner. 她总是强调应当有良好的举止 A small water spout shooting down into a pool. Shoot here means. Run down into a pool very quickly. Shoot can mean move quickly to various directions. For example, flames were shooting skyward. 火焰直冲向天空 He shot past me and ran away. Means he ran very quickly past me, and ran away. In the eerie silence of the cavern. Eerie means frightening and mysterious. For example, at night she heard the eerie noise of wind howling through the trees. 很神秘而且引起恐惧的。这篇课文讲的是我们不太熟悉的洞穴探险。那么作者把这项活动和其他较为熟悉的事物做了一些比较。Let's look at how these comparisons are made. Caves have the same peculiar fascination which high mountains have for the climber. 这句话的比较是通过 the same 以及由 which 引导的一个从句来表达的 
They arrived at an enormous cavern, the size of a huge concert hall. It is an absolute race. 这里比较是通过一个独立主格来完成的，意思其实就是 as huge as a concert hall. Exploring really deep caves is not a task for the Sunday afternoon rambler. So this comparison is made through an indirect statement, meaning is not as easy and leisurely as rambling on the Sunday afternoon. So this text is about the new sport of potholing. We know that in recent years, many new sports have been popularized in China as well, such as bowling or golf or baseball. In Western countries, not only playing sports by yourselves, but being sports fans are also a very important part of people's life. It is usually a very popular topic of conversation. People will talk about the sports that they are most interested in, but in different countries, the main interests are different as well. For example, in Britain, football, of course. Is a popular topic, but in America, football is called soccer. Soccer is not as popular as American football, 橄榄球 and baseball, and of course basketball. So if you want to know that country, make sure that you are the sports fan of the most popularized sports event in that country. All right, so much about this topic. I'll see you next time.